hello again. These are the videos of So You Bought Yourself a Used Cremina. Uh, we're taking up uh, where we left off, sort of, a few days later. Uh, we had taken the machine all apart and are now proceeding to the cleaning stage. And if you, uh, I've got my, my asbestos covered boiler that I've been soaking in, in a bucket of water, just plain old water. And this is the result of soaking the, the coffee related parts in coffee cleaner. Citric acid has turned kind of blue. And this is the last issue that we have to deal with is the, to see if we can cure the short in this heating element. The first thing I'm going to do is deal with this boiler that this is either asbestos or an asbestos-like substance. Christian at Olympia does call it asbestos. You did say, what was his quote, Barb? Oh, I don't remember. It was something on the... An error. That was an error. It was an error. It, it was something in, along those lines, but don't quote me. Or Christian. It's, in, in my opinion, a lot of the reason that they coated this boiler had to do with aesthetics as much as anything. That get rid of my water. Let's set this aside. Is that you'll see is very simply that once it's 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 wet, that we just come in here and, and it it just falls off. This is the part where that it was hollow uh, up around the top. But I just take an old used uh, work knife and you'll see that it, it just is it's, it's a bit aesthetically challenged you note here the, the the soldering on top of the boiler but we just peel this off just like this the new boilers that they make for the new Carina, Carina are just absolutely beautiful it's perfect the stainless steel is all but of course, that's on the new models. That's on the new models. And this, this 1983 is the last year that any of these, this is really a thick uh, coating that they put on this. Let me see. It's been soaking for quite a while, but we just take this and clean it off in this manner. Always reminds me of the Yeros. The way they slice that off the sides. <laughs> it doesn't exactly make you hungry for the roast beef. No. Okay. Now. I'm just going to put this up here in the, in the center. And you go ahead and just scrape off as much as you can. This can also be done while underwater if right. it makes you feel better. Right. If you're nervous about it, as you can see, there's really no flyaway that I think that most you know, most times it's pretty much. Um, um, I'll take a little piece of. It's thought that some of the dangers of asbestos have to do with people who mine it or have an extremely long-term relationship with it. But as much as anything on these machines that that what will happen is that when it gets hollow it'll start to flake off. When it gets wet it will actually smell funny. But as you see this is not the, the thing of beauty that it started out to be. Right, once I get rid of The large parks, there's a little bit down in here you have to pick off. And then I just go over and a bit of final. Rinse. Now I'll take this material and basically just take it and put it in that. I just take it and fold it up like this and put it in a plastic bag and take it to my recycling center and they know what to do with it. If there's one little piece that escaped. And that's that. So the boiler's clean. Now the rest of these parts 
I'll go ahead and we'll just run some clear water into these parts. Rinse off all the citric acid. And then I'll just lay them out here. My work table. I like to think, kind of think of this um, as taking place in three three parts. There's taking the machine apart, which is, as you saw, it's kind of a brutal and predictable situation where you have to use a certain amount of brute force and inventiveness. And this part here is the, this is... This should clean up nicely. Yeah, they, they'll they look nicer too once we brush them up a little bit. So, you take this and your baskets. And if you've soaked it long enough, you should be able to just use a soft brush, an old toothbrush. And you examine with the light behind you to make sure that there's no... No blocked holes, and that's all clear. Uh, this part here, the piston itself, as much as anything, it's just a lot nicer to handle this piece once you get all the coffee oils and junk off of it, because we still have to remove the, the seals from this piece. But. So... Uh, with the group, I generally will use, uh, once again, a, a soft brush because that's the function of the, that's why you soaked it, so you don't have to get too aggressive with it. You clean it out in this manner. Examine the walls, you see those there's sort of little they're a little pitted. Okay, there's my there it is. You get down in here a lot of times there's some there's some coffee that that might be stuck down around where the portafilter gasket was. Make sure you get back into all the edges down in the spot where the seal lives. There's a little rough scale up here in the top. But you just, this is all basic cleanliness. You go through it just, once you have everything clean, then you actually get to enjoy working on the machine rather than worrying about the grunge and or how dirty that was, the dispersion screen. Mm -hmm. Just absolutely, if you, if, if you leave it for overnight and it, and it still has stuff stuck on it, just leave it for another day because the, the jogo doesn't, doesn't hurt any of the metals. We just fish through and get all of our parts out here and make sure they're nice and clean. Alright, that's, that's all the parts. Now, the next step We'll deal with this in a second. Um, the next step is going to be I think I'll just let these dry a little bit more and we'll talk about that element rejuvenation. Let these this has a little more cleaning to do. You see a little bit of scale that's stuck here and there that we'll want to clean off later. But we just kind of give it a good examination. I'm going to take my gloves off. It was mostly for the asbestos situation. So you feel through. There's a little rough spot. We'll take care of that. Now, let me go ahead and talk about this. This is a big issue. I'll grab my meter, excuse me, so we can really see what, <clears throat> what our meter readings are on this, this situation. Okay. Now, 
once again we set our meter on ohms. I'll put this up to hopefully we you see that good burn on this. Is that working for you? I'm working on it. There, that's better. Okay, so we go on our terminals. 12 3, 12 4, that's that's about right on this thousand watt element. And then we go over to the metal base plate. That is the water short. You notice the the meter, it never it it never stabilizes. We're up to 40, 4, 4, 6. So this indicates that water has gotten inside the terminal ends. That's the hope. Once and this is a short that you see by putting one probe on a terminal and the terminal. other on the plate. On the plate. Or you can put one on the terminal and you can put it on the coil itself. Let's see, that's not reading there. Of course, everything has to be clean. Now we're getting no reading, so that's an interesting little concept. Well, that was quite an interesting concept. So what's going on now? We're getting a reading. We have a short circuit. Look at the sheathing is not continuous with the plate. Well, you see, there's Before always the short wouldn't travel always something the expected. It could be that it's just completely filthy and it's not making a good contact with, my, entirely possible. with my thing here. Okay, now it's reading on the back of this plate. So, nonetheless, is that the current will be going through through this part here. So the attempt to, to deal with this, the first thing I do is take, take a tool and get rid of these ceramic beads. Because th this is the part that you want to this is a part of the patient that you're going to deal with. All right, we just get rid of those beads so we can really look and just see what's what. And a lot of times these are, are completely degraded, but these don't look too bad. Okay. We need to to expose the metal on this. Have a really a good look at it because I mean this is a critical concept. You're rebuilding the entire machine around this element. One thing you notice is that this is usually soldered. These two points, that solder is is broken free, which is only going to mean that uh, that this is likely going to be a slightly noisy element. This is going to have a tendency to vibrate and rattle against that, but it doesn't affect the function. So the first thing I do with this is um, I use a glass bead blaster to clean everything off so we can get a good look at it. So that's in the other room. As I said, how much time do we have, Barb? 1323. We're at 1323? Yes, 26, 27, 28. Okay. Let's, uh, uh, let's come back. Uh, we'll go over to the bead blaster on the next video. So.